Darksiders was a surprise hit in 2010. The action game about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, heavily inspired by Zelda, put you in the bulky boots of the main character known simply as War. In Darksiders 2, War steps aside for his more agile brother, Death. Open the portal. Is Death even more awesome than War, or did Vigil Games back the wrong horseman? Had Death been sent to his doom? Darksiders 2 takes place in the same time frame as the first game. You travel to the Nether Realms, a place between heaven and hell, to prove that war didn't start the apocalypse. I must restore humanity to redeem war. While some might expect this to involve lots of painstaking detective work, rest assured that Death simply struts his action hero stuff and solves every problem with characteristically violent bloodshed. Just like the previous Darksiders, this game follows the Zelda formula down to a T. You and your horse are dropped into a central overworld that branches out to different dungeons. These are filled with all sorts of gadget-based puzzles, which get more difficult as the game progresses. When you reach the end of the dungeon, there's the inevitable boss who needs cutting down to size. While hardly the most original approach, it is fun nonetheless. The combat is extremely satisfying, as you can easily string together heavy, light, and ranged attacks. There are characteristically over-the-top finishing moves, and you can do cool stuff like summon demons that help you take care of large groups of enemies. Climbing is a new aspect of Darksiders 2. However, this feature, made famous by games like Prince of Persia and Tomb Raider, isn't great. There's always a set path you have to follow, and the climbing controls of death feel clunky and unresponsive. This leads to many missed jumps and frustrating moments. Loot is another new element of Darksiders 2, which doesn't quite deliver. While it is pretty sweet to find new weapons and armor, it seems kind of stupid and unnecessarily time-consuming to have to look for better shoulder pads or boots or a blade. The addition of loot feels out of place and seems to be put in simply for the sake of having loot, an element so successful in many other titles. The main improvement of Darksiders 2 is its visual quality. It really does look very impressive. All the different areas have their own dark, cartoony style, making the world a fun place to explore. And there is enough of it, as this game is about twice the size of the original Darksiders. The only downside is some annoying loading times between certain areas. We also have to make mention of the sound in Darksiders 2. There is some really good music in the game. And the voice acting is top-notch. Death, voiced by veteran Hollywood actor Michael Wincott, is a badass character, making every cutscene a joy to watch. I came here seeking the tree, and your elder speaks of fire. What is it? Darksiders 2 is a great game, even though new elements like loot and climbing don't add anything significant to the experience. Death, on the other hand, is a very cool new addition, and the Darksiders universe remains an interesting place to explore. We also have to praise the combat, which is, just like in the first game, very satisfying and fun. Overall, Darksiders 2 is a very well-executed game, even though it is extremely predictable. It's an insta-buy for fans of the first game and gamers who like a dark version of Zelda. However, gamers looking for anything remotely innovative or new better pass on this two-way trip to the Nether Realms. <laughs>